Have you guys heard about the issues going on in Hong Kong? Because I'm sure you have. However, do you know all the information about this? Specifically, why are there still protesting even if the bill that they're originally arguing has been scrapped? Well, that's what I'm about to talk about. So let's go all the way back to the bill and then let's just move forward into where we're at right now. Now, originally there was a bill. It was proposed by someone called Carrie Lam. She's the chief executive of Hong Kong. So pretty much like a president. They're an autonomous city. So that means that they like have some sort of self-governance, but at the same time, they're under the Chinese banner. Now what the bill essentially was is that would allow China to extradite Hong Kong citizens to China to be prosecuted. So if they decide for one day, hey, you know what, this person is getting too powerful, they're kind of a threat to China, we're just gonna like blame something on them, extradite them to China and have them get prosecuted. That is the problem that we're running into right now. So all of this is exactly what ignited all the protests. And then in June, the bill was actually scrapped. So June of 2019. However, the protests actually continued. They have about four points as to why they're still protesting. So number one, they want the government, the Hong Kong government, to formally withdraw the bill as opposed to simply shelving it. So Kerry Lam is saying, look, we got rid of the bill. The Hong Kong protesters are saying, well, hold on a second. We don't think you actually got rid of it. What we think you did is well, you just took the bill. And you're going to vote on it later when everything settles. We want you to permanently get rid of it so you never have the opportunity to be able to get this bill through again. Number two, launch an independent inquiry on police behavior. I'll get into that. Number three, amnesty for those arrested, which is roughly about 1,300 people. Number four, democratic reform to give Hong Kong residents universal suffrage, so the right to vote. Right now, there's 2,000 people that are allowed to vote. Would you like to know the amount of citizens who live in Hong Kong? 7.39 million. That means that literally 0.03% of the population can actually vote. Oftentimes, those are also pro-Beijing supporters. And so the people themselves don't have the opportunity to vote on government. So let's go all the way back to the protest here. So there's 1,300 people that have been arrested, like I had said, and there's been over 900 protests so far, and it's counting already. In terms of police brutality, Amnesty International claims the situation could have been uglier behind closed doors, because we don't know, accusing police of committing assaults in custody that amount to torture. For example, one man who was arrested at a protest in August told Amnesty that, after he refused to answer a question, officers took him into a separate room and beat him severely, threatening to break his hands if he tried to shield himself from their blows. Quote, One flipped me over and put his knees on my chest. I felt the pain in my bones and couldn't breathe, the man said. An officer then pried open his eyes and shone a laser pointer into them. He was hospitalized for several weeks with a bone fracture and internal bleeding. Hong Kong is still continuing protests until they're able to receive more autonomy from China. Jesus guys, that's pretty bad. Now I get it, this is only one case study as opposed to many issues that had happened. Some of the protesters aren't completely innocent as well, but look, there's countless examples of this very thing. You can even look at videos, they're everywhere. Actually, maybe you shouldn't because it's pretty graphic and you might not want that sort of emotional trauma. You're gonna have to trust me on this unless you wanna go check it out for yourself. The point here is that this is a very ugly scene and the police as professionals should not be treating its citizens like this. That isn't something that we should even have a conversation about. Now, as a recent response, the Chinese president, Xi Jinping said that Beijing will, quote, resolutely safeguard the prosperity and stability of Hong Kong under the so-called, quote, one country, two systems framework granting the city a high degree of autonomy under Chinese rule. Now this policy is very similar to what they're doing in other areas like Xinjiang with the Uyghurs or Tibet with the Tibetans like the Dalai Lama. However, the Hong Kong protesters are continuing their protests because for them, it's all or nothing. Either we are going to be under Chinese rule forever or we're gonna make a stand right now. And that's what the situation is really about. So we'll find out what happens in the upcoming months. I am very curious to see. I think there's really two things that we can expect here. Either one, the protesters will stop, or two, the Chinese government will play more of a direct role. I feel like it's either gonna be one or the other. Granted, the answer is probably gonna be somewhere in the middle, unfortunately. I thought it'd be a little bit more clear and concise for all of us. However, I would like to see which one comes first. I'm not even gonna bother making a prediction on this one. So anyway, guys, thank you very much for listening to everything that I have to say. If you guys liked it, please give it a like and a subscribe. If you'd like to comment on this as well, I would appreciate it. Um, if you're watching this on television, thank you as well. My Twitter and Facebook is at ZachMoss6, Instagram, the Zach of Zachs. Anyway, guys, have a good day. Live long, don't prosper, because there are too many kids on this planet.